right now on Chronicle in High Definition. Amy Katzis lost 25 pounds with ease. I didn't feel like I was dieting. I really didn't feel like I was depriving myself. And... And their names are Andrew Richard and Jenna Mariah. Following four miscarriages, Julie Rose carried to term. Plus, Linnea Duff was diagnosed with a deadly cancer, but... I have gone from preparing for my death to feeling like I'm really going to be here for a while. Medicine gets personal with positive results. A brave new world of individually tailored treatment and the local hospital leading the way. Personally yours on Chronicle Now. Linnea Duff never thought she'd live to see her 50th birthday. Five years ago, this New Hampshire mother of three was diagnosed with a rare form of lung cancer that nearly killed her. I have a variant of lung cancer called BAC, bronchioalveolar carcinoma. I had actually been short of breath for a couple of years and I was um, misdiagnosed with asthma and then finally I had symptoms of pneumonia, was treated for pneumonia, it just wouldn't go away. Despite breathing problems and a chronic cough, it didn't occur to doctors that she might have lung cancer because Linnea had never smoked. Once she got the heartbreaking diagnosis, she sought treatment at Massachusetts General Hospital. Deciding to come to this hospital um, is probably what saved my life because they are just able to be at the cutting edge of new treatments. Initially, there were no new treatments for Linnea, just one-size-fits-all chemotherapy that failed. By fall of 2008, Linnea had reached end-stage cancer and was preparing for death. Then suddenly, there was reason for hope. Researchers had identified the specific genetic mutation that causes her type of lung cancer. And as it happened, a new drug targeting that mutation had just gone into clinical trials. Thoracic specialist, Dr. Alice Shaw. We found that she did have this new mutation and she was immediately started on trial with this new elk targeted drug called PF2341066. It started working within days. It was almost as if the, the cancer had melted. You know, it's, there, there is still an area there of perhaps inflammation, perhaps cancer, but it had been filled with cancer before and now it seemed virtually empty and I just burst into tears. I mean, it was just, it, it was unbelievable. It is the type of story genetic researchers say is happening more and more frequently. Specific drugs are being designed to correct specific mutations. What has been called the era of personalized medicine has officially begun. And to be ready for the expected onslaught of new research, cancer specialists at Mass General have created a new unit called the Translational Research Lab. The aim is to speed the process by which new science translates into new treatments. To that end, the lab has started routine genetic testing of new cancer patients. Co-director, Dr. Leif Ellison. So at Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center, we have over 100 new cancer diagnoses a week. Currently, here in the Translational Research Lab, we're doing the genetic profiling on as many as 20 or 30 per week, and we hope in the coming months to be able to double that volume and within, within the coming year to be able to do this sort of testing where it's appropriate on all the new patients who are diagnosed here. Dr. Ellison says there are 110 known genetic mutations responsible for causing cancer and that the pace of discovery is growing every year. The pharmaceutical companies know what they are, and all of the pharmaceutical companies are developing many different ways to target these pathways for therapy. So uh, right now, it's really not so much an issue that we don't have uh, drugs to test, but that we have to do it in a rational way to find out which of the drugs are the most effective for a given pathway. Linnea Duff is certainly one of the early beneficiaries of personalized medicine. Still, her doctors caution that while she is healthy, she's not necessarily cured. We know that even good targeted therapies in general do not cure, that some patients can respond for a very long time. Some patients don't, unfortunately. 
um, but some patients can and that's certainly what we should shoot for. I have gone from preparing for my death to feeling like I'm really going to be here for a while and you know I, I don't have illusions. Most of these targeted therapies the cancer finds a way around eventually but to be given more time to have my body return to a state of health again so that when and if the cancer returns I have a better immune system to fight it and also to hope that there are more discoveries made, you know, more, more of these targeted therapies in the pipeline. Up next, for the man or woman who has everything. And it's presented to the client in a velvet lined sterling silver box. The Whitehead Institute for Biomedical. Yeah! Cambridge, Massachusetts, a full decade ago. Scientists at the Whitehead Institute celebrate via satellite with colleagues across the globe. The massive human genome project, after 10 years, had finally produced a complete reference draft of a single human genome. Billions of letters that make up a strand of DNA had been analyzed, or rather, sequenced. The cost, $3 billion. I've been a little obsessed with bringing down the cost of DNA sequencing. For he is Dr. George Church, professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School. In the mid-1980s, Church helped develop the technology that made the Human Genome Project possible. And for 25 years, he's refined gene sequencing technology so that it is exponentially faster and cheaper, which has given rise to a new project he calls the Personal Genome Project. The Personal Genome Project grew out of the recognition that some of the technology that we were developing in my group and, and our collaborators was going at much faster rates than we had imagined. And we realized that, that it, we were going to end up with this amazing technology all dressed up and nowhere to go if we didn't have valuable correlations between genes, traits, and environment. Church's ultimate aim is to help researchers gather the oceans of data needed to unravel how genetic and environmental factors cause disease. He and nine colleagues are the first to have their genomes mapped and made public online. Now, Church is using his website to enlist 100,000 additional volunteers. He's also looking for institutions to donate resources to help sort out the data. Well, we don't know where it goes. That's part of the excitement. Uh, it, you know, like Wikipedia, it, it's, it's vast, uh, the amount that we can learn about ourselves and, the, and the, all the correlations that, that, are, that are there. We just need to find them. And so the interpretation and the computing and all that, that's something that's very easy to get people to volunteer to help do that. So we're just kind of, uh, you know, helping people help each other, really. Let's say you're curious about your own DNA. A Cambridge company called Gnome will map your entire genome for just $68,000. That's a lot of money, but far less than the three billion it costs to sequence the very first genome. CEO Jorge Conde says clients get all their own data, plus a guide to what it all means. We call this the genome key. What's loaded on here is the digital representation of somebody's complete genome, plus the software um, to be able to browse and navigate through, through that information. Where you can see is there are points of interest that have been marked along the way. Things that have a uh, red color are areas where this particular individual's genetic makeup um, puts them at increased risk for a specific condition. One complete genome fits on a small storage device of which there is only one copy. And it's presented to the client in a velvet-lined sterling silver box. Gnome maintains a constantly updated database of DNA research. Conde says the key is presenting that research in terms anyone can understand. There's a lot of data in the genome, six billion bits of information. So you have to be able to, to uh, present the information in a, in a digestible way. You can download new, new research uh, and new associations, much like you would download new songs from iTunes, and it downloads directly onto your, uh, to your uh, uh, genome key. 